August the 16th, 2011. Alex, would you please give a blessing this evening? Dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you would bless the deliberations and the decisions that are made by this, by those whom the committee have chosen to fulfill these responsibilities and to make those decisions which are for the welfare of all of us. <clears throat> we know that those who serve for the welfare of others are indeed blessed by thee. And we pray that uh, all will be for the long-range benefit and welfare of each of us. We enjoy many things because we live here and we set forth certain expectations and the end they happen. When the wind blows down the telephone poles and the lightning strikes, there are or fires are accidentally uh, set, something was set ablaze by them and by the daily efforts that are made by those who labor in our behalf. So we thank thee and ask that all will go well. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you, Alex. Is there any additions to the agenda this evening? Madam President. Yeah, yes. <laughs> I do have an addition of the civil rights, fair housing policy that's necessary for our loan application to KDHD.
Um, it could also be used for other other things other than fire. Correct. In case you're searching for somebody, if there's a tornado, you can search for somebody in a right. building that's collapsed. Right. We, yeah. Any it'll pick up any heat signature. Thank you. Any other questions? Thanks, Michael. Police Department, Matt. Yeah, two quick things. Uh, one, we're now up on Twitter and Facebook with official department pages, um, so we can release uh, any breaking news information, weather information, anything we need to get out to the public on there. So you can follow us on both Facebook and Twitter. They're official department pages. And uh, the other thing I want to say is uh, something I think is, is great. Uh, yesterday officially marked the 50th year in law enforcement for Chief Ralston here, and uh, I just think that's an incredible accomplishment for anybody in, this, in any business, but uh, you hear all too often about the bad guys in our business, and he's one of the good guys. He's a legend to cops around the state. He's helped a lot of people in his 50-year career, and I just uh, thought we would recognize uh, what an incredible accomplishment that's been for Chief Ross.
bonds not uh, non-discharging without any irrigation, we're going to take like 50 or 60 acres. Uh, I don't know that at this point in time we want to get into that. So, like I say, for right now, the only way that I can really feel good about telling you what to do, I still put in the ponds here. Now, like I say, if you want me to, I'll look into it further. Yeah, and what he's saying is we've been told uh, on our inspections we get uh, this last year of the KDHC back from district office, he said the exact same thing. He said with the new uh, limitations they're going to put on discharge that hardly anybody will be able to meet permit. So he's, he's said the same thing that Don is that at some point in the near future we will have to go to non-discharge. So at some point we will probably have to add uh, sell out there anyway, so it, it is coming. Yeah, and that and what what we were looking into was that okay, we could take the money from these cells here and apply them, you know, as a starting point on your other ones. And I, I've asked KDHE loan people. I said if we were going to do that, add that out there, would we still be able to get the thirty percent loan forgiveness? And Tentatively, the answer is yes, but they said, write it up and tell us what you're going to do and send it to us. Now, well, I would like to talk to you first. So, any questions, any thoughts here? Well, I think your evaporation bonds are probably more common. The, the other two plants that we looked at are non discharging, is that correct? Well, no, they, they, yes, their pond, but their ponds are built specifically for the nitrate removal plant, which is, again, which is what I proposed all along. Right, right. Yes, yeah, yeah. Now, Lewis has a sewer pond that's non-discharging, but they own some land right next to it that they run an irrigation system on. And, and even then, there, there's a limit on how much water you can put per acre and how much chemicals and more with the problem that we could possibly run into. And this is going to be negotiable with KDHE because we're dumping all the salt into it. It's the sodium and the chlorides that you put on the land and there's a limit to that. Like I say, to start out with, it won't be a problem. And I don't know if it's going to be two years, five years down the road yeah, it's going to depend on how much rain we get. You take a year like this, you won't have any evaporation, but what that does is it concentrates the, the chlorides and the sodium in the ponds. Then you get a rainy year or something and you need to start irrigating, then you've got concentrated higher levels. So it's calculating the size of the pond that we would need is going to be a little tricky. Now, again, if, if later on you, you just have to do it for your sewer system, then that makes it a, a, a different proposition. It's where we start dumping all of our salt from the backwash in that makes the calculations get sticky. Uh, you would have been got something <laughs> question there. Bobby, do you have a question? You want to, do you have a have question, question for Bobby? No, I don't have a question, I'm just thinking. Oh, okay. Just thinking. Yeah, we can do it, but it's, it's, are you at this point in time, are you wanting to look at doing something that big? I think we should just keep our pond. Well, I was going to say, you said yourself you'd stick with what we had planned originally, right? And the reason I say that is that I know that will work. Yeah. I don't have to fight it. I know that will work. Right. This out here, you know, it may work the first year or two and then we get a real rainy year and you got water everywhere and all of a sudden you're calling me saying now what do we do you know i'm, I'm looking at this almost as a selfish point of view is i don't like those calls <laughs> but you know i i can i know this will work well we should keep what we pay yeah. good plan so far yeah. okay go, go on the other right. Okay, like I say, at, at some point down the road, just be aware that, that it's coming, though. You're going to have to do that. But you're talking on the sewer system. Yes, on the sewer, yes, yes, on the sewer system. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, there's almost <clears throat> no lagoons in the state that will make the new rags. The only ones that will are the ones that were, you know, somewhat similar to Greensburg. They were way oversized. You know, instead of 120 day detention, you've got 200 days of detention time. Then they can maybe make it. But most, yeah. most towns don't have that. When that lagoon system was put in, it was top notch, top the line. They were shown other towns, and right. 30 days later they changed it, and it's not right anymore. And see, that's that's going to happen again. Yeah. It's yeah. going to happen again. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I will do that. Now we have rerouted the lines, and I'm going to let Mike talk to you on that. We're getting real close to being finalized here. We just got one little. Thing that you guys are working on. Yes. Okay, Mike, I'll let you talk. Thank you. I made up a little map here for our most recent pipeline proposal to get all the water lines, um, water wells routed to the new dock trade plant. Thank you. There should be some next. And I'll just kind of go over why we take these routes over some other areas. Uh, since we talked last time, the biggest thing was moving that location, that south well, and then locating the two new wells and using those instead. It kind of gave us some new options for what we could do to kind of save some money on the project and cut the cost a little bit. When we first started, we were looking at doing a pipeline down 1st Street, and that was going to carry the water from both the west well and the south well, and we'd either go to a plant on the west side of town or the industrial plant where we don't have to worry about that south well anymore. It kind of opened up a different route for that west well to get it over to the proposed treatment plant. Uh, the, the biggest benefit to this new route going up along 7th Street is that you can see probably a third of that water line is going to be out in the open field where we can do open cuts and save a lot of money instead of trying to bore down 1st Street. Now from you know, about two-thirds of that water line where it connects, you know, there along 7th Street, there is going to be some boring stuff going on. But just driving through there and stuff, there's a lot fewer obstacles that we're going to have to face going down that street than what we were running to into on 1st Street. So, you know, just starting from the west side, we're going to tie in there at the wells. And I think Mel's talked to two landowners there on the west side about possible easements to get them through there. And then everything except one other spot would be on city right-of-ways that we can go through to get everything routed to the new treatment plant. Well, we've also discussed up there on the north well, uh, trying to get that water line through there and having the least impact up there by your scout cabin and everything. And we discussed doing a nice longer bore through your the camping hill up there and everything to kind of keep that in place without disrupting too much stuff up there. And then you get east of that hill and it's about an open shot along that you know sand road over on the east side and clear over through the field and down to the treatment plant. Um, the east well, that well number three over there, we run a six inch line and then the only part that we've still got to find that some kind of easement for would be between 3rd and 4th Street. There's kind of a gap in between there that the city doesn't have right of way to right now that uh, we're still working on tracking down. But there is some on the west side of Centennial Court down the alley that we could run and kind of work through there to make it just start snaking everything together to get it to that central plant. And this map doesn't show it, but I believe what Dom's plans are for getting the water back into distribution would be putting the 12 inch down 5th street and tying in and get it closer to your water tower and then back out into distribution. Uh, everything laid out on the treatment plan is still kind of, uh, it can be moved for the most part. The four circles are your, your four wells for now. I think we just want to go with the two wells and they probably be the two south wells and kind of leave the north end, you know, for, you can still lease that out for farm ground. And, I know what Mel had mentioned is keeping the two 
uh, evaporative bonds further to the south in case the city ever did want to resell. You wouldn't have the ponds up at the north end where you could sell off a tract of land and not have evaporative ponds up there and interfere with them. So that's kind of where we are on this with the getting the wells over to the treatment site. I think that that 7th Street alignment is going to be a pretty nice alternative to going down first and save a pretty significant amount and doing fewer bores and uh, it is going to be quite a bit shorter than going back down to the south and going along 1st Street. Great. And all the the bore locations and everything that you see like along seventh and stuff is still kind of preliminary. That was we brought in a picture off of Google Earth and kind of picked everything out. It's pretty neat what you can do with that. But our surveys our surveyors will come in and do a real close shot so we'll know just right where everything is and what quantities we'll need to bore and what we'll need to go around. You always run into stuff, you know, that you don't know until you get there that always comes up too. Are there the same 90 degree angles? Are there more or the same? As opposed to the, the, the first street? Mm -hmm. You do get a few more up there, as you can see, you know, going through the fields. It's just kind of part of the ball game where you you got to give up some stuff to, to make up stuff at other places. I'm getting our easements. Well, is there a way to just go straight from the northwest, the top beam to the to the one straight north of the west well? Eliminate, you eliminate all that. That's not easy. Yeah. I'd have to talk to the property owner on that. Uh, you'll see if they would let us go with a cross country type deal. Right. And that, that's a possibility. Well, we'd eliminate a lot of them right there if we could just go straight up. Letting us on there first, and then we, you know, right. So they're open to it right now, so we can kind of fine tune in. So yeah, that would, that would be good if they would allow that to be, to be done. Yeah. Okay. And then well five just stays where it's the south wells just stay in, plumbed to the system, but not used in case of unless emergency right? Is how that works. Power plant well, yeah, it's padlocked. Yeah, it should yeah. be valved out. Right. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's on standby right now. So that's the status emergency standby. <clears throat> now it gets kind of tricky in there where you got to have your you got to have a hundred foot buffer around every well that you plan, you know, down to put in in the new sites and. You, trying to figure the looms and stuff in there too. So that's just kind of a first shot, you know, at how you fit the wells and the looms in there too. But that could all be changed. That's pretty preliminary on that side. And one thing, Mel, has said you use a lot more water this summer than you ever had in the past. So the size of our plant has changed from even a month ago. Yeah. We've had some big days that you gotta be able to handle. If you have your sediment ponds that close to your other wells, you're not leaching that sodium in. That's why they're double lined with the leak collection system. This is what you're talking about in the pool. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Instead of what, five five nine, you just have basically roughly two forty fives and you're out of there. Mm -hmm. And then the, the other proposed above ground storage tank, is that out here by the, is that what the other two little dots are yes, there? Yes, yeah. And, and again, these things can be rearranged. We just have put in here for now. Uh, something you might think of is, do you want the, the overhead doors facing the, the street or do you want them facing the west and just uh, the end of the building? You know, we can make anything work. It's, now, Mel said that the homeowner was questioning how it was going to set in there, you know. I don't care if you want to talk to him and say, how do you want it? You know, we can make it work whatever you want to do. Well, 
makes perfect sense to have doors to the street to me. You're, you're right, it does, except that we will probably put somewhat of a street in there anyway on the west side of the building. It'll, again, it'll depend on how, where we put the salt tank. You've got to be able to get to the salt tank with the semi. And so, That's outside the building, correct? No, it, it, it will be inside the building, but there will be a connection, a three-inch stainless steel connection on the outside of the building. He just pulls that up, hooks his hose on, and blows that salt in the tank. That's right. so, but he's got to be able to get in there and turn around and come back out. I make him back out. You do? I'm not going to. If guy can't back a semi a couple hundred feet, then he's going to be back. Right. <laughs> Probably a lot of drivers shouldn't be driving. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, we could put a street, you know, and put a big turnaround in if that's what you want to do, but that just adds a lot to it. Maybe for, you know. Yeah, you can. You could maintain a whole street from you know, eighth to fifth. Yeah, I mean, we could do that. If you want to do that, we could do that. But okay. yeah, that wasn't part of my right. original plan. Right. right. It would just be something the city guys could do. Money yeah. was. And the only thing is, we still have to stay out of those hundred foot circles protection for each well. I'd have to look and see how that would fit in. Looks more cut and dry than the first picture. Yeah, we're good. we're working on it, you know. We're you know, and I hope that by and I hope to have it this time, but we're still waiting on a couple things. That by next time we'll have this pretty well nailed down and know where we are. But this save by changing this probably saved you one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Plus, they can buy it. Once should we get the the north well and the west well combined going along the dirt road on the north side of the plant. We could save a boring if we put that on the south side of that road instead of the north side of the road. No. I mean, we can't save a boring. Mm. You're just gonna you're gonna have this yeah. bore over here yeah. to bring this line over here and then you come over here and it's all open trenches. Yeah, it's all dirt street prairie and yeah. And okay. Well, that'd be all. Yeah. I mean, we get all we got to do is get the easement on this side, on the south side of the river instead of the north, and then you eliminate okay. this boring over here. Okay. It's all dirt streets, so it's good. Yeah. I mean, one way or the other. But I mean, if, if we got a board, I mean, we can eliminate that boring right there. But the intersection of Prairie and Eighth, whether it be on one side or the other, you wouldn't have to board. Yeah. Okay. Right. If you, if you move that line to the, to the south side of that road, that eliminate one boring. Okay. Yeah, it's being a dirt road. It's, yeah, it's an old dirt intersection. Right. Well, I'm just saying they got a board yeah. here, which we can eliminate that. And we'll bring this back to you, and if you have any more comments like this, we feel we'll free. We'll go up there here, get an easement here, and come right off of there, and come right straight over. I think it looks great.
I was contacted by King Eagle Water, and we're going to set up a time to do it probably when we get more in the fall. Maybe we'll be for that for, okay. for me, and then so that's still very active. Okay. Good. Okay. Parking sign for the Central Kansas Land Title Incorporated. Do you want a parking sign there or a limited parking sign? Which one was it? No parking? What was it? I can't remember. John. Council, do you remember what it was? Like? Like My opinion is that there's been an attorney's office there for who knows how long. There's a number. And it worked out fine. Just want to know one hour parking. Is silly. And there's parking all the way across the other end of the building as far as you can go. Yeah, there's parking on the west side. There's parking on the south, so I kinda I kinda think maybe um things are settling down over there and and maybe it's okay, but maybe we ought to ask her again and just see. And and maybe go from there. I I haven't seen that it. it's been a problem. I've been watching it, but I'm not the owner of that business, so and I've been watching as well and it seems like to me there's plenty of plenty of lots of time during the day when there's lots of parking. So Yes. I did visit with her after the council meeting that was brought up and uh, she had indicated she might kind of keep track of who was there, how long or whatever, and how many parking stops stalls were available for how long and, and I don't know if that's an ongoing deal, but she hasn't gotten back with me. That's okay. that was the thing I think she was going to look at to kind of be able to tell us you know, what is available for how long, and then I have yet to hear back from her, so that may be ongoing. Okay, so leave it on old business. Table at council? Yes. Yes. <coughs> okay. All right, policy for wind generation, we're going to table that as well. Greg is still working on that, so trying to get us some more information. Okay, parking in front of the four, parking in front of the Stafford County Annex building, the handicapped parking. Um, well, I spoke with JD came in the other day and just said that uh, they had worked it out with senior center that they'd be allowed to park there through the lunch hour, but that uh, Steve Moody did specify that it had to be a loading and unloading zone only the rest of the day in case they had to pull in emergency vehicles or something. So I think they they have it all worked out. I'm, I, I think was the issue before us the senior since some parking, we've received a letter. Mm -hmm. Right, I think so. And I think that's the county had worked it out with the Wood Center. They can use the county parking and they can use the east side in front of the annex, the further east in front of the annex for parking. And there's two ramps, right? Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Well, there's Is actually a ramp at the west end for the unloading of a, of a vehicle, a van, or whatever, or any other you know, type of vehicle for handicap. And at the very far end, there's actually two sidewalk ramps, one you know, facing to the north and the other one going to the east. So if the fire hydrant is at the east end, so that kind of limits. I want to do some measurements. There's basically room for three vehicles and the, the, the handicap parking, you know, as far as the so actual there is so there is a handicapped parking area there. It, 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 has, it has not been marked or designated. Okay. We're kind of looking through this on what we want to start at one spot that. or have the unloading area and then have another spot designated for actual parking. So if someone came up, they could unload it also. So that's, and after that, then they What do you mean by unload? There's a, a van can pull up beside there and unload. Oh, okay. A, First wheelchair yeah, okay. there, and then they could pull forward, and then someone else could pull up and then load it out of a car or I whatever. See. So you're actually, you could just have that one area designated as unloading, and that's all the handicap area, and then 
whoever they was there, they would have to park somewhere else. But if this person was truly handicapped and needed to leave the vehicle there, that could be done, but it would kind of hinder someone else coming in. So uh, if you had another spot and just directly ahead, they could pull up and then the other person would just either stay there or have to move somewhere else. So I don't know what you got on the do. So. I don't know. Me personally, I don't have a problem with the unloading area. And then they go and park somewhere else. Yeah, I think that's what they're planning on. I think we just do the unloading area, mark that. Yeah, but still leave the parking open in front. Yes. Yeah. Street to cities. Mm -hmm. How's the county working out what the city business is without talking to us? I mean, how are they? How are they stating what hours the parking is open on the city street? Well, I, I don't think they can should be able to do that. That's the city's department, not the county. I see where you're coming from. So I, you know, the, the commissioners, the, they, they can't be state and Arizona. The commissioners should come to the <coughs> right. and, and ask for We, we don't designate what happens in the county, so I don't know why they designate what happens I in the city. I don't think they're trying to um, make an issue out of it. I think they're trying to appease everyone. And well, I just have a problem with the county being able to control what happens in the city when we don't control what happens in the county. Okay. Well, I mean, just want common courtesy. What was the initial problem? The, the handicap assessment the to the annex building, okay? You, the handicap uh, assessment or uh, entrance to the to the annex building, you are you should have an area designated for handicapped people to be able to use those entrance into the building. And the senior citizens you know, have been parking for years, you know, in front of that building during lunchtime because it's really kind of hard for some of them to get around even though they can still walk and all that. If they park down the street to the, on the east side of the Witt Center and to the north. So. I think the other issue Steve Moody saw is that in front of a government building you have to have so much space for emergency vehicles to get in by a fire or pull in an, an emergency vehicle of some sort. That was the other thing that I was told. Isn't there around the courthouse, is it one hour parking or what is it around the courthouse there? Um, on the north side and on the west side? On the west side and um, I'm not sure on the north side. I'm not for sure either, so I guess we'll leave that, leave it on the old business, and let's check that hour. See if there is, isn't there signs on the north side and the west side of the courthouse? No. The north end. I think the main thing they were trying to avoid is just having four or five cars parked there all day for eight hours, you know, because you have to have some place to legally get emergency vehicles in and out and you've got to have the handicapped parking and I mean I think there's rules and regulations about all that but then the Wood Center got upset. I just think it's kind of gotten blown out of proportion look at it. Well have you had a chance to look at any of that front of the Wood Center that you want to talk yeah, about? Yeah I looked at that. Uh, Mark and I had talked about maybe making some more parking for the the people at the Witt Center may actually making a, a cut out or cut in there in front of the building and, and similar to what used to be over in front of uh, the, the annex before they did away with that parking. Uh, we could gain some spots there, uh, maybe one for sure because we have to angle them and they'll be backing out in the intersection. I mean, we can carry it down. The thought I had, and, and we kind of touched on it when you were visiting, uh, we already have parking in front, 
the other thing, uh, if we want to add parking, it will not be as handy, but it will still be accessible to everyone if we actually kind of create a new angle parking on the east side of the building. But for some people, that's still kind of a long walk for them, and maybe they could kind of talk to each other, and we're going to park out front and, and go to the side. But, you know, it could be opened up there for more parking on the east side of the width center by, you know, for, do some excavation for concrete there, but that we can add, we can add more stalls there with, with probably a new most benefit rather than maybe gaining one stall out front. We could gain you know three or four parking stalls on the on each side. So I, I don't know where or how far we're going to go with this, or you know, it might be something that have to do with the long range plan and we'll get back to and do it. But, Okay, as I'm reading here, we would like the curbside of the area to be marked in such a way that offloading would be allowed, but not parking. So he's wanting no parking in front of the annex building. Yeah, and I think this was before the last meeting. Okay, yeah. So they had worked it out to where you could pull up to unload, load, that's fine. They worked it out with the width center, I believe, to the parking between 11 and 1 would be fine. But other than that, you know, just no parking because of a handicap and the emergency vehicle issue. So like when people come to pick up their kids for skating, they could sit over there in their car waiting for the kids to come out? And that's what we thought. And I'll get the tickets. Unless you could put in a little bit by an hour or so, you know, from eight to five or something like that. Well, we can table it and we'll get with all the so, I don't understand why we just can't designate that one area as handicapped and leave it like it is. Loading and unloading. That one little area, and then if somebody wants to park in front of it, they can park in front of it. I mean, that's the way it's been for years. I don't know why, what the big difference is, I guess. Are you talking about over the witch end? No, we're no, talking in front of the annex building, Bobby. Okay. There won't be no parking anywhere along that, in front of the annex. And that is a city street? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then do the way it was. But we did need a market for loading and unloading. Yeah, I mean, you can walk, mark that one area that there's a handicap, loading and unloading, and then we move on. Is that what's stimulating the other parking issue on the other side of the street? No, that's something no, that's totally different. That's a totally different, different deal. Yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, Two totally different things. Two different things. Okay. okay. Anything else? Okay. Thank you. Well, he is saying here that uh, people parking, let's see. If people are parked in front of the annex, they'd have to walk between the cars, creating a safety hazard. Second, any parking in front of the building with the handicap would eliminate other handicap drop off drop off. Lastly, ambulance and fire would be restricted access. So I don't know if there are I mean I think he's coming to us asking and I think maybe we need to ask talk to him about it if we need to look into it a little bit more. I mean, if there are certain laws and regulations against um, having full-time parking because of emergency access to a government building, we need to understand that. Instead of just saying, we're not going to do this. Yes, Tom. When we did all the curbsides 10 years ago, when we first came here, we had a consultant in Wichita that came by and was an expert in handicap accessibility and all those issues. And he had charged us very much to do that. Is that guy still around? Well, I don't know. You know, like, I, you know, that way you have some blessing with somebody saying you need two handicaps or you need one handicap. You know, I think. Need for you know, that might be helpful. You know that I've got it on file. Okay. Okay. Well, I think if we just talked to Steve, we would better and we could see that. it. He would like to 
Okay, the next study. Donna. Yes. I hope you guys all have your stuff from before. Actually, I do, but I don't have it with you. Okay. How many copies do I need? Does anybody have their stuff?
if what she was saying wasn't true, then, then maybe another option would be the way to go. But where most everybody's using that anyway. I think the one, we need to, the, 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 the uh, accounts that had just one on it were mostly the houses that are basically empty and somebody owns and doesn't live in them, right. you know, or uh, some businesses that don't operate with much water. It really wasn't, like I said, I was surprised when we pulled those out. It really wasn't the uh, folks that are on the limited income. So they usually use at least two. So we need to make a decision tonight. Um, if you make a decision of a consensus of what you want the ordinance to look like, you know, what figures you want, then we'll have an ordinance drawn up and you would approve the ordinance for the change. So we need to make a motion on the Yeah. Just a consensus on which one you want to do and then we'll adopt the ordinance that we do. And we might need to know when you want to make that effective. Right away, or do you want to wait? Well, didn't you say last time you kind of waited until the when we did kind of the, the peak usage was kind of uh -huh. over, and then kick it in here? When we changed the electric rate, we did. I think it came into effect for the October billing, which was the um, read readings from September fifteenth to October fifteenth. Do you send out a, a letter or anything? Well, the ordinance will go in the paper. Okay. So that's how, but. So yeah, I think we should. You can put a little flyer in your We should send yeah. something saying that. Plain as of. Well, and, and, and we can send a copy of the ordinance in the next in the building. That and okay. I think it can be very. I mean, the ordinance doesn't have to be complicated. I think everybody's aware that water rates has got to go up and spend three. Mm -hmm. uh, Was it the general consensus to be would be the way to go? I mean, I think so. So. Okay. Yeah. Get the details on. Does your people do they have a do they have a sample or how they want to? Do I can ask them. Yeah, I don't know if they have okay. proposed. Okay. So we need to make a motion then. No. No. Okay. Thanks, Council. Okay, six, the thermal imager for the fire department. What did the uh, you know, you said you were going to talk to Mike? You know, nobody ever got back with me, so I don't know. I had inquired again before the last meeting, kind of trying to prompt that along and um, I simply was told to kind of just let you know that they were working on it and they'd let me know when it so okay. um, oh. Okay. So we might leave it on old business then? Do we Well I thought the idea right. last time was to see how our budget goes. Yes to leave it on old business to see how the budget for the year plays out, how many runs we have, and if we have budget room to do it. If there's something else that comes through, you know, great. But hopefully we'll... So what's the issue with that? The, the part of your, part of your insurance had, or, go ahead. I had spoke with him to see if there were any programs through Farm Bureau, seeing how the one incident here using that camera probably saved Farm Bureau quite a bit of money. You know, if there were any programs that they had for fire departments to, you know, to donate part of the money for that. So at this point I haven't heard back. Madam Mayor? Yes. And I wouldn't limit that to just Farm Bureau. I'd go to coal insurance as well. Yeah, all of them. Try if out. If there's any others. State farm. Uh, any preaching yeah. insurance. Yeah, I mean any of them. Because really, I mean, we understand if it ain't, then why is it worth it to us? Because it's, I mean, if they ain't willing to help us out. Because it's safety for our guys. Yeah. 
super far it's back. Safety you can first. stand outside and look in there. So. Not necessarily stand outside. I mean, the, the insurance has nothing to do with it. I mean, yeah, it's great, but it's safety for firefighters, for the citizens, for everybody. Mm -hmm. You can search a house ten times quicker than you can going in and crawling on your hands and knees. You can see what you're doing. There's a hole in the floor. You can see it. And we insure them, right? What? We insure them. Life insurance. Through that Sterling or someone. I'm not sure where it's at. Like our liability insurance? We have liability and life insurance. Mm -hmm. So you check with Sterling too. What was the price again on that market? Do you remember? It was like 8700 and we had 2200 I think that was what it was. Yeah. What was, what was remaining was 6500 $30. Yes. Um, I would propose two things. Uh, that camera can also be used as a public service for the town. You can use it on the outside in the wintertime. You can help citizens show how much heat loss they have in around windows and doors. So it can also be helpful for them in a, in a um, saving energy. Uh, so there, there's a, another side to that. And the other thing I would propose, I know there was $2,100 in the county attorney diversion fund. Typically I use that for public safety items. I want to keep some in there just in case the police department needs some. But I, you know, I think we could take a thousand bucks out of that pretty easily if you wanted to go toward that. Because that's that's designed to come back in the community for uh, public service and public safety and that kind of thing. So that, that would help some. That's good. Thank you. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so I guess I'm not understanding how long do we need to kind of wait to see how the budget works out. If what I tried to explain last time is if you want it to be from the fire department's budget, their biggest budget item is their salaries. And that all depends on, you know, they can kind of guess how many meetings they're going to have and probably pretty much know what their training is going to be. But they have no way of knowing how many runs they're going to have and how long those runs are going to be and how many firefighters will be at those runs. So. That's the big question. So if you're not concerned that it stays within the fire department budget and you're going to look at the full general budget, then you have more leeway. Well, you could wait until December or close to it. Take half of it out of 2011 and then look at the other half in 12. But we're only looking at $5,500 now. Yeah. So. And we have about half our budget left, right? Um, I have and the two so payments for the trucks that come out. Yep, you're right at 50% of your budget. And your um, what was your yeah. And your payments have already been those were the biggest thing, uh -huh. right? Right. They've already come out. You have last year's how they come out from last year's or not? Or your budget, but it doesn't have the prior actual. Okay. Let's see it. Let me look at their questions.
So, I mean, more than likely, they're probably going to stay within their budget. Everyone else think? I'd like to see him have it. So would I. I'd like to see him have it. This, could, this piece of equipment can mean the difference between life and death for anybody that's trapped in a burning house. Also means the safety of some of our firemen. So. I just didn't take a look.